The majority of my decisions in life have been from the voice in my head. And it's probably over the last six months where I've been able to separate that voice making the decisions. And that voice is the voice that's given me courage within my life to do what I've done. So now separating from that and, and surrendering within this process of coming internally and feeling the decision versus hearing the decision, quote unquote hearing. Um, but it creates a lot of confusion in my life right now uh, because it's very difficult for me to understand what I should and should not be doing. And maybe the question is, or maybe the answer is, that, well, you just need to practice more. But I, I've, I've derived much of my courage from that voice. So now when I get into these um, courageous states, whether it's, um, you know, I started writing a book or I like, um, I only know courage from that voice. And it's, it's difficult for me to make this transition. So I don't know if you have any advice to help me make this transition. What you call courage is an energetic thrust from the ego that gets you to do things which are not necessarily what are going to support you in your life in terms of the joy that you experience. So you may have had the courage to uh, go out and take a job which you otherwise wouldn't have, but did that then actually bring you the joy that it should have? Chances are, in most cases, not, because the louder that, that voice uh, of so-called courage is, it's also the courage to do things that don't bring joy to this system. And your question about, well, if you go with the truth impulse, how do you then um, get that, that energetic push to do something? That's where the training comes. When you train yourself to listen to that truth impulse, your sensitivities will change. You start to feel more comfortable with going with that truth impulse than going with the ego lie, let's call it that. And as you said, yes, it is a question of practice, no doubt about that. But, but, uh, it's also a question of a posture of surrender, where you're not approaching it from a utilitarian angle, but more from the angle of being an instrument of the truth. That should be the aim and not what can I do and what courage can I get and what can I achieve. So the whole approach has to change. You'll have to go from being a desiring creature who needs the courage to desire more and fulfill that desire to being someone who is aware that their raison d'etre, their reason for existence is not to desire, but to be. So you teach yourself to start to just be, you know, just be. Not every moment has to fulfill a desire. The, the moment is to be. And this is a very practical approach, although it doesn't feel like that in the beginning. This approach leads you to that kind of living where courage is not required. Because nothing will challenge you to the extent where you have to pull up courage. You will be in situations where everything will flow. Money will flow, love will flow, and then joy, of course, that takes over the whole system. This is not an idle claim I'm making. I'm just here to support you in your journey of self-realization. And if you start to approach your master, your inner master, your antar guru, in that complete surrender, and just go with the truth that is impulsing you because you seem to connect with that it's like you know what i'm talking about or at least you have a sense of it a feeling for it then you don't have the right not to go with it you've lost that privilege you've gained the privilege now of going with the truth you know what i mean you can't say uh, i mean i know what the truth is and what the impulse is but uh, i need the courage of the ego to live my life what kind of uh, uh, what kind of uh, approach would that be it would be an approach leading you to more suffering.
simple. So now the dilemma is, oops, now I know what the truth is, now what am I going to do? You know, where do I get the courage to go with the truth? That would be the question that comes up now. And that courage comes from the spiritual master, it comes from connecting with someone, from feeling love. It can be anyone you connect with, you could have a spiritual master nearby, but you also have to take up guidance. When you need that courage, you get that courage from someone who's capable of giving it to you, you know? It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful way to live. Why would you want to, to uh, go with that, that voice and I don't know what you do uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a profession or, you know, you could be anything, you could be a, a stockbroker on, on Wall Street, it doesn't matter, the same thing applies to everyone. I'm not suggesting, uh, I'm not damning you to that uh, profession, but uh, I'm, I'm saying it could be anything. You could be a, a scientist, you could be an, a painter, you could be a musician. It doesn't matter what you're doing. What matters is that you are bending to that truth and you fail a hundred times and the hundred and first time you do it and then you see what happens. That's the, that's the, that's this sadhana, this practice, you just don't give up. You pull yourself into this moment, again into this moment, again into this moment, and again, and again, and again, and again. This moment, this moment, this moment. There is no courage needed if you are present in this moment. There are no tigers in this moment moment, you know, whether you're in Hollywood or on Wall Street or in, in the ghetto or wherever, it, this moment, no courage is required. It's the moment of truth and so it guides your life, it holds you and you don't have to go anywhere because that truth is within you. Religion took it out, put it somewhere outside yourself, tried to mediate, now you put it back into yourself, now go to it, you don't need the courage of the ego. Yes. Amazing feedback and, and thank you, and you, you described it perfectly. I'm actually, I purposely decided to take a transition from um, corporate, and now I'm in this transition of, of seeing what the universe brings to me. And um, uh, sometimes I get a little anxious is the wrong word, but like um, I'm ready to, I'm ready to, to do the next thing. I want to make sure I'm doing and not sitting too much. So it's, it's, it's that balance between letting things come to me versus me historically being very proactive and, and going to create things. So it's this kind of odd transition time for me. Well, you can't expand consciousness forcefully. You have to bend to the expansion. That is the thing. You know, you can do a lot of things with your force, with your... Uh, with your ego courage. It's not something one has to demonize, but fact of the matter is, if you want to experience that thing called expansion of consciousness, which money can't buy, which force can't buy, which all the power in the world can't buy, then it is surrender that you will have to learn. And why not? It's an amazing experience. It's it's worth it, and you can still work, and you can still do your corporate, climb your corporate ladder or fall down it every once in a while. You can do all of that, but you have to do it in this posture of surrender, and that's when the expansion of consciousness happens. It's not a this or that thing, it's, it's all one thing, you know? It's one thing. As always, amazing. Namaskar, thank you. Namaskar, Anthony. Thank you.